Hi all. Today we're going to be ranking every single implant in Planetside because this is probably a good tier list to get out of the way. And besides, I have quite a few implants that I think are really good, really bad, and some people are going to disagree with me. So you know what, we're just going to do it as we do. So of course we will start A to Z and we'll just work our way through. So starting off, we're going to start with Aerial Combatant. And Aerial Combatant is... Aerial Combatant is not useful. So, the problem with Aerial Combatant, at the end of the day, is... For the trigger it requires... There's just better implants. I don't think it's very good. I think it's D tier. I don't think there's really ever reason to run it. Honestly, 20% jump jet fuel on kill is not a very strong perk. And there's very little reason to run it when other implants exist. I just... I can't recommend it. Ammo Printer, on the other hand, is very... Ammo Printer is great for vehicle play, and it's garbage everywhere else. I think it's, like, for vehicle play, I think it's easily an A-tier implant, even an S-tier implant. But for general infantry play, it's easy F-tier. Like, it is useless for standard infantry play. So, I'm gonna say it's A-tier, but that's for vehicles only. It is junk for infantry. Do not get me wrong, it is junk for infantry. Assassin is... Assassin is weird, because ultimately Assassin is just kind of mediocre. Honestly, getting the auto spot is nice, but it doesn't really matter because you should be Q spotting whatever you're shooting at anyway. And the spot checks are nice, but it's still a 50 meter requirement on rank 5 unless you headshot. So, if you have the skill to headshot, I don't think it's very good. I don't think it's the worst thing ever, and honestly, I do like having it for vehicle play because it means that you just auto spot whatever you hit, which is very nice for splash weapons. But on the whole, I think it's probably just a D tier implant. There's very little reason to ever run it. Assimilate is easy S tier. 200 shield instantly on kill is extremely, extremely good. And there's no reason not to run it on everything infantry related. It is extremely good. Athlete, I'm also dumping an S tier because it just makes you more agile. It's just a huge convenience pick. It makes you react quicker. It gives you extra move speed if you're sprinting for a long time. It's super nice to have. Easy S tier. Avoidance is C tier. Uh, it's great if you really hate Spitfires or uh, personnel mines. I actually run it on my Light Assault and Infiltrator for that reason. But on the whole, it's a pretty mediocre implant. Um, it's not the greatest thing ever, but I I wouldn't run it unless you really, really hate Spitfires or whatever. Or like if you're not using something that would say demands assimilate. Like Shock and Light Assaults, in my opinion, are really nice. Really nice for avoidance. I have the game open, so that's why you'll hear stuff. Just so I can check implants and whatnot, because I'm not doing all this by memory. Battle Hardened, I think, is B tier. Um, Battle Hardened is nice if you really, really hate Bullet Flinch, but there's so many good implants nowadays, and it's only a 50% uh, reduction. I mean, of course, if you get the kill, it goes to 100%, but still, on the whole, uh, other implants exist that I would say make it not as good. So, we'll move to Cat Lake, of course, and Cat Lake is. Catlike is probably B tier. The extra jump height is really nice. It lets you do some cheesy maneuvers. It's nice on certain classes and loadouts. But on the whole, I wouldn't say it's the best thing ever. I think it's a very solid implant. But would I run it over an uh, athlete or assimilate? Probably not. Of course, we're going to do all the standard rarity implants before we go to exceptionals. So we're going to have a bit of a pile up of exceptionals. Combat Surgeon is... I think it's S tier on the one build that it really likes. And I think it's... I wouldn't run it otherwise. I'm going to put it in S tier because the Carapace Combat Surgeon build is very, very good on Medic. It's probably the best way to play Medic. And for that reason alone, I'm going to put it in S tier. But outside of that, I wouldn't run it. It's one of those implants that's really, really good on the one specific build that it takes. And outside of that, I probably would not run it. Moving on to the next implant, which is Covert Drop. It is junk. You know what? It's just garbage. There's no reason to ever run it. Uh, I think it's an easy F tier. It's, it's trash. You don't want to be taking damage in the first place. It's it's bad. It's just pointless. Critical Chain is pretty good on snipers. Um, it's probably not the best thing ever. I think it's a solid B tier. It's really nice to have, though. Deep Operative is... If you can make it work reliably, it's like a solid probably A tier. Um, if you can't make it work reliably, it's like E tier. Um, I'm going to say it's a B tier implant on the whole. It's a bit annoying to make it work, but it's good when you can make it work. It does have its uses. Obviously, cloak reduction is very, very nice, especially if you're doing things like Stalker Infiltrator play. But it's kind of weird to make it work reliably. So, next implant, 
Electrotech. Um, why? There's no reason to run this thing, like, ever. Unless you're setting up some really, really weird meme build. I think it's F tier. I don't think there's really any reason to pick it whatsoever. It's just weird. Moving on to failsafe. Um, again, same problem. Why? Uh, the one, like, thing that I could see this being okay would be, like, Heavy Shield. Because, in theory, I guess you could probably just press F again and get a quick extra, like, 100 HP. But, would I recommend it over other implants? Probably not. I mean, maybe, like, E tier. But, I, uh, you don't want to be breaking your shield in the first place. So, I don't think it's very good. Ah, uh, is Firestorm on this list? I don't think Firestorm is on this list. It doesn't look like it is. Okay, so Firestorm is uh, F tier. Uh, it works on, like, the mini chain gun, and that's it. Um, just because Firestorm doesn't really have a reason to exist. Oh, wait, is it actually on here? Oh, I think it's this weird exception-looking implant. Hmm, okay. Well, then, I think I think that's Firestorm. It'll bite me in the ass later if it's not. So, Firestorm, of course, gives you 8% rate of fire on kill, but it also, like, makes your bloom and recoil significantly worse. The one gun I can see this actually being okay on would be something like Naganata or Mini Chain Gun, where your Kona Fire is locked, but still, 8% rate of fire is not huge. I mean, it's 8% DPS, don't get me wrong. But you need to be chaining kills and a gun that doesn't suffer too much bloom for this to be genuinely worthwhile. I can't recommend it. Fortify. Um. No. Look, 20% small arms is not the worst thing ever. But you have to stand still for it to work. It's like, E tier. You don't want to be standing still and engaged in the first place. It might work on the Naganata elsewhere. Eh, it's really, really hard to justify. Gunslinger's really nice for the one pistol build that it works on, so I'm gonna chuck it in B tier. If you're running, like, dual pistols, it's pretty funny. Other than that, I probably wouldn't recommend it. I, I can't really see it being super worthwhile outside of that one specific build. Heavyweight is, like, D tier. Um, sure, it reduces explosive screen shake, but that's about it. That's all it really practically does in regular gameplay. Um, I wouldn't run it. I just don't think it's very good. Uh, Jockey is... Like, C tier. If you're really, really working into, like, turrets or the flash gunnery build, where you play engineer, so you get a shit ton of HP on the top of the flash, or if you're sitting still on, like, your mana turret, it's pretty good, because it'll just make you harder to kill. But outside of that, it's useless. Like, it's 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 effectively useless outside of that one specific build. Uh, Mending Field. Mending Field, I really, really like. But on the whole, it's probably a D-tier implant. You need to put it to rank 5 for it to be really good, because then you basically just get AoE 300 HP uh, heal on everyone near you, and then, your, and then your shield bubbles get that too. It's really nice for shield bubble play, but you, shield bubble isn't very strong right now. And... While I really like it, I probably wouldn't recommend it on the whole. It's just not super good. Uh, mobility Mesh is kind of okay, kind of useless, maybe C tier. I mean, extra move speed is, of course, never a bad thing, but again, you're giving up other strong implants to take it, and for that reason, I can't really recommend it. Uh, Nano Mesh, I would argue, is just straight up junk. I can't see a reason you would ever run this thing. Honestly, having reduced decay on the shield is not super good, because you're probably popping the shield reactively into a gunfight anyway, which means the whole shield's just gonna go kaput as soon as you activate it. You, like, you're not sustaining the shield. Like, it would probably- it would work on regen. That's, like, the one situation where I think it would work, but outside of- or, uh, sorry, resist. But resist isn't good to begin with right now, so... Uh, Nightmare. You get cloak upon melee or kill within 5 meters. Uh, it's funny on light assault. I think it's C tier. Uh, it's really funny on, like, Light Assault shotgun builds. Other than that, is there really much reason to run it? No. Uh, Ocular Shield is probably, like, E tier. Um, sure, it's not bad, but nades you can usually protect yourself from anyway. And the big nade that you would want Ocular Shield to work against is EMP, and it's still going to wipe your shield. Uh, because it only hits the duration. So it's still going to wipe your shield anyway. Um, it's just not very good. Overdrive is a meme. Uh, it's F tier. 
Uh, extra turbo on road killing isn't reliable enough to genuinely be worth picking ever on a vehicle. Uh, it's funny, don't get me wrong, especially because at rank 5 it works in Val it works on ESF and Liberators, but still, like, it's never going to actually happen. Paratrooper is useless. Um, I think it's an easy F tier. Uh, you don't want to be taking damage to begin with, so getting a little bit of jump jet fuel whenever you take damage I just think isn't, like, important. And sure, it does give you a little bit of fall damage protection, but it's not important. You're giving up too much strength with another good implant for it to be genuinely worth running. Uh, Ransack. Ransack is... I think it's pretty good for tanks. Um, I'll, I'll give it a B tier. Um, it's, it's nice, don't get me wrong. I wouldn't say it's the most important pick ever, especially if you have other implants that you prefer running. But on tanks, it's, it's nice. I mean, you just get free ammo and free healing if you kill things that are close to you. Regen is F tier, and I realize this is probably not... This is prop. It's okay. So regen being F tier is a somewhat popular opinion, but the people who like regen are going to hate me for this. So the reason I'm dumping regen into F tier is very, very simple. It's way too slow of a heal, and it won't let you be aggressive. You need to wait 10 seconds for regen to do anything to begin with, and then it's only 35 HP per second at rank five. This means that it, all in all, it takes you what 24 seconds to get let's like it's it's super super slow see 500 divided by 35 is 14 10 seconds out of combat you're looking at 24 seconds to get 500 hp back out of combat not taking any damage this is too slow and honestly the other problem is 100 hp on head or 100 hp on headshot is not bad but it's over two seconds so it's what 50 hp a second on a headshot kill it's not good it's, it's junk. There's no reason to ever run it. It's just garbage. There's no reason to ever slot it. Uh, response Jacket is actually surprisingly decent. I think it's probably a B or a C tier implant. Uh, it's good if you're really annoyed by the frag meta because it will basically just prevent you from getting frag spammed. But outside of that, like it's good for point hold builds. Uh, other than that, I probably wouldn't run it. I don't see a point in it. Uh, Revenant is... Getting cloaked upon revive or reviving someone, so if you basically have rank 5, if you're a medic and you revive someone while you're using Revenant, they'll get cloaked. Um, I think it's probably an E tier implant. Uh, if you're getting revived, here's the thing, if you're getting revived, you're either going to get shredded as soon as you stand up, in which case cloak doesn't matter, or you're in a safe spot and you won't need the cloak anyway. I don't think it's a very useful pick no matter what. So... Uh, Robotech is good with the jockey build. Outside of that, it's pretty useless. I'm going to keep it where I put jockey. Where did I put jockey? See here? It combos really well with jockey because it gives you resistance while you're on top of your mana turret. Um, so it stacks really, really well with jockey. But other than that, it's pretty useless. You have to be near your deployables for it to matter. Safe Fall is probably a C tier implant. Uh, it's good if you run like Impulse, Amateur, or Icarus Light Assault. Um, other than that, pretty much no reason to ever run it. It's not very good. Safeguard. Um, Safeguard is weird. I've seen le very legitimate arguments being made that it is a very excellent point hold pick. Because having 20% resist upon getting up and getting a, an immediate 200 shield health if you're playing infantry is honestly not bad for a point hold build for a point hold build I'd actually think it's pretty strong but I'd say the main problem with safeguard is that it's just competing with too many other good implants you don't want to be dying in the first place it's good if you know you're going to die into an engagement but Outside of that, I don't think it's a very useful pick. I think it's a little too unreliable for... Well, not Sorry, it's not unreliable. It's just it's competing too much with better implants, and you don't want to be dying anyway. Uh, salvage is like A tier. Um, if you're a max shitter, I mean, you get extra health upon killing other maxes. Um, it, it's just good. It's, it's just good. Uh, what, is Scavenger not here? Okay, uh, Scavenger is not here. So, what we're going to say with Scavenger, basically the way Scavenger works is I have the game open, so I'm just going to, I'm not going to bother tapping in, or uh, pulling up in the game in and out, I'm just going to basically be reading it from the game. Um, Scavenger is really, really strong in a couple pistol builds. 
um, because it effectively lets you have infinite magazine. Uh, if you're if you're really really good, like if you're constantly double tapping with commissioner and you have it at rank five, like your magazine just doesn't go. Um, outside of that, it's not very good. It works really well on the on like pistol builds. It works well with gunslinger. Uh, I'd say it's probably a B tier implant. With it's good on it's good on the one build it's on, and otherwise it's just trash. That's the problem with a lot of these implants. Is some of them are just really good on select niche builds, and outside of that, they're just kind of trash. That's why it's hard to rank some of them. Sentry Shield is decent. Um, you need to just be rank 5 for it to really be good. It's nice, I guess. Um, it's nice. It's probably like a C-tier implant. I don't think it's super good, but for what it is, it's alright. Sidewinder is, in my opinion, a B or an A-tier implant. It makes your strafe speed better. Uh, sure, you accelerate worse going into the strafe. But having 35% better strike speed is very nice for peeking corners, abusing client side. I think it's a good implant. Uh, I've gotten a lot of use out of it while I was doing rocket launcher axioms. I think it's pretty good for what it is. It's probably not the perfect implant out there, but I like it. I think it's pretty alright. Let's see, spring step is not here either. Okay, so spring step, uh, if you reload, you get extra sprint speed and you get better jump height uh, for the next 1.5 seconds. Um, it's trash. Um... The, you don't need these perks, and having to force the reload to get them are not, like, it's not desirable. It's F tier. Spring Step is junk. Survivalist is going into S tier. This one should be expected. Um, you get better shield, you get better shield recharge out of the box, which is awesome. And you get extra sprint speed if your shield breaks, which lets you panic out of situations. Sure, you lose it if you get hit, and you still get 150 heal no matter what. It's really, really good. Uh, Survivalist is excellent. Uh, it just makes you stay alive better. <laughs> it's that good. Uh, Sleeper HUD is... Sleeper HUD is like a D-tier implant, maybe. It's probably like an E-tier. I don't think it's the worst thing ever. It's nice in vehicles so that you just don't run into tank mines all the day. But target range is a useless metric to know because you should be able to estimate roughly what you're looking at. Um, I don't think it's very good. Uh, it's good if you don't want to run over tank mines all the time, but outside of that, hard to justify running. Uh, Symbiote is weird. Um, Symbiote's weird because you basically need to have your shield up, but your health be bad. If you're not running medkits, I think it'd probably be a pretty decent implant. Um, but there's almost no reason you shouldn't be running medkits. So I think it's a D tier, probably. I don't think it's the best implant ever. I, I could see a use for it with weird builds that I'm probably not thinking of. But it just seems a little too wonky to be genuinely useful. Uh, target focus is shit tier. Uh, you don't need, like, 20 second hold drop duration or whatever the hell you get out of it. And health bar is useless. Crosshair IFF is useless. Just Q spot the bastard. There's no reason to run it. And, of course, our final common implant is Vampire. Uh, it's good on meme builds, like pistol meme builds. I th I'm going to chuck it in C tier. Um, because, like, if you're running a pistol build, you get 325 health per kill. Um, which is pretty funny, especially if you're comparing it with, say, Gunslinger or Scavenger, where you make a really, really funny melee or uh, pistol build. But outside of that, eh, it's good on the one build it's on. Moving into... The Exceptionals. I see some of the newer Exceptionals are not here, so we're just going to have to rank these. Some of these are whatever. Oh no, we've already ranked Avoidance. I'm so silly. Of course I didn't see Avoidance. Okay, well Berserker's not here, so we can talk about Berserker. Uh, Berserker is good on Maxis. It's really, really good on Maxis. Um, it's probably like an A-tier implant. Um, only downside to it is that it's, you're easier to kill, but other than that, it's, it's good. Uh, Bionics is... This is an unpopular opinion with a commenter that I was replying to the other day. I think, honestly, Bionics is E tier. Uh, shield is too annoying to function reliably. And it works well on, like, the Flash Engineer build, because you get extra shield HP. Uh, so you can become really, really tanky on top of the Flash if you're playing, like, Engineer and you pair it with um, Jockey. But outside of that, medkits are just better. It's... It takes too long for your shield to regenerate for it to genuinely be good. Uh, you just have to play too passively. It's much the same problem that regeneration has, where it's just a little too... You have to play too passively for me to say it's actually good. 
Carpus Zest here. Uh, Carpus is just really, really good, especially if you're already a filthy medkit druggie, or if you're playing Carpus Combat Surgeon, because that loadout works extremely, extremely well. Carpus is an easy S tier. Uh, you really need to build for it, I'd say, for it to be truly excellent, like Carpus Combat Surgeon, but I think it's really, really good. It's really, really good. Cold Heart got completely killed. There is no reason to ever use it. Um... Crouching, lowering your burning damage is useless because there's not much incendiary in this game. Um, it's just, it's just useless. It was good when it, it was good before they changed it when it just made, uh, it just gave heat weapons better cooldown because then it was actually good on like engineer. But other than that, it's junk. Uh, counter intel is like C tier. Um, counter intel I really like for vehicles because if you take damage, you immediately know where the bastard is. So, like, if there's an archer plinking you, or a lock on heavy plinking you, as soon as they plink you, you know where they are, and you can just delete them. Uh, outside of that, it's not really useful. You're better off just assuming you're spotted most of the time. It, I can't say it's very good outside of vehicles. Counter Shade is not here. So, Counter Shade is... Counter Shade is, like, better... Countershade, you know what, no. I'm not even going to try and make an argument for Countershade. It's after. Um, killing an enemy, getting your detection radar reduced, or rather removed, is useless. Like, you're probably just going to get Q-spotted anyway. It doesn't matter. And the whole underwater gimmick, nobody likes fighting underwater. Don't delude yourself. Disengage. Um, I'm going to say disengage is E tier. Um... You know what? Actually, no. I'm going to say it's F tier. Uh, emergency Repair is not a pick you should ever be running on your max, because generally the faction-specific abilities are just better. Uh, whether it's Sarah Shield, Aegis, Zoe has its use, and Lockdown has its use. It's just not a really useful ability to be running in the first place. And chucking nearby infantry is funny, but it's not actually like practical in any way. And then the Sprint Excel Speed buff is nice, but it doesn't actually really matter. Experimental Stims is... Experimental Stims is, like, E tier. I suppose if you really need that one more med kit, it's nice. Um, but getting a random rank 5 implant for 12 seconds upon stimming is... The implants in it are not good. That's the thing. Safe all, vamp, battle hardened, heavyweight, and response jacket are all not, like, super useful implants to begin with. So unless you're planning on, like, intentionally chucking yourself off a mountain and you gamble that it's going to give you the one you want... That's the thing. Like, the odds of you actually getting the one you want are not high. So. I've also realized that the uh, implant that I thought was Firestorm is actually Firewall, because they have very similar logos. So, Firewall is F tier. Um, <laughs> there's no reason to run it. 25% um, extra health on turrets or Spitfires is not useful. It's it's just an, an annoyance for enemy infiltrators. <laughs> There's no reason to run it. I want to try a weird firewall meme build where you get like a bunch of Spitfire engineers, like Robotech or whatever, so you get a bunch of really tanky Spitfire turrets, but <laughs> I've never been able to prove if that build actually has any merit, so I'm just going to say it's F tier. There's no reason to ever run it. There are better implants. Infravision is uh, C tier. Uh, if you really want Infravision, it's nice, I guess. If you really need the thermal, it's alright. Um... I would just say just put an HSNV scope on your gun instead, but sure, if you really like Infravision, that's up to you, I guess. Uh, Logispec, uh, they just gave this one away for free in the new Prime bundle, so I'd recommend claiming that while you can because it's perfected, meaning that it's for all characters account-wide. Logispec is weird. Um, Logispec as a technical implant is useless. Um, it has no actual benefit for main play, but... It's really nice for vehicle play. It's a convenience perk is what it is. I'm going to say it's C tier because it's a convenience in play. Uh, as long as you're the pilot and you have logic specs, squad mates can spawn straight into your vehicles. Um, so if you don't want to wait for somebody to jump in your tank, your liberator, your uh, really your tank, your liberator, or your harasser, it's a convenience perk. Otherwise, it's useless. So obviously people can already spawn into Valks, Gals, and Sunders by default. So it's a convenience pick for certain vehicles, and outside of that, it's useless. Guess what else is useless? Minor Cloak. Uh, Minor Cloak is trash. 
uh, remaining stationary for eight seconds to get a cloak is effectively useless, and it takes forever to actually get out of the cloak, because it is a really long delay upon exiting the cloak, where you can't actually really do anything, like fire a gun. So, I would just say it's trash. <laughs> There's no practical use for it. Oh, they changed phylactery since I last looked at it. Okay. Um. Okay, phylactery, I'm just going to say is F tier. Um, you need three revives to be able to self-revive. Um, sure, self-reviving is funny, but from what if they haven't changed it since I last used it, there's a unique visual animation that plays when you can actually activate when you can actually activate phylactery, and any enemy with a brain will see this animation, and they will know that you are going to self-revive, and you are going to be shot to shit before you even stand up on your own screen. Practically, I would say it's useless unless you're throwing yourself down the mountains on Amrush or something. Outside of that, can I call it useful? No, uh, I can't recommend it. So, that's everything. Uh, feel free to blast me in the comments or whatever. I'm sure some people are going to be pissed. Thank you all, and I will see you all again another time. Bye.